Okay, we're starting up uh, project 92 for Thunderbird Super Coupe. The engine in it is rattling. I have no idea what's wrong with it. I've rebuilt it a couple times now, so I'm just going to swap it out with a newer engine. You're going to be along for the ride. Uh, there's a the car. I'm sure some of you have seen it when I posted up projects of it before. There's the new engine I'm getting. It's 95, 108,000 miles on it. I heard it run. So we're swapping that one into this. First step is going to be removing the hood. As you see, my gas spots are crap. Okay, hood's off. We can't let the whole working room. Go ahead and get the fluids drained out of the radiator. Okay. Radiator's drained with minimal spill. Okay. Right here, taking the hoses off. Just get them out of the way, they're kind of a pain on this car. This is a side over here. And as you can see, lower radiator hose is right here. This is what I'm taking off. It's all pretty boring at this point. And the other hose went from there to there. Sit you back here. smart to move your radiator catch pan over a little bit whenever you're taking the lower hose off because a lot of times they've got a lot more coolant in there and it'll spill everywhere make a big mess and it's gonna be a pain so I'm gonna get my channel locks and break it loose and it has a typical on this car it's gonna fight me so Very large hammer. And break that loose. And what that is is just the quick disconnect coupling on the supercharger. out of the way. Supercharger pot comes off. And now we gotta take this part off which goes way down there and hooks up 
to the intercooler. That intercooler is what I'm trying to get out of the way right now. So, we're not going to disconnect it up here at the uh, intake inlet because I'll never get it out of there with all that crap in the way. I just want the intercooler out of the way. I also got to disconnect it down here. Yeah. One in the cooler. So now with that out of the way, you can see I got a lot more access to that lower radiator hose to get it out of there. Now it's just back over for, they're putting the nuts back on the intercooler. I like to put parts back where they belong, if possible. Few places to remember when putting them all back together. cock back in the radiator and we're done. Okay. Now, next up on the to-do list is take the spark plug wires off and then the pretty much the entire supercharger assembly. You can leave it on but it makes it a real pain getting it out of there. It's easier to just take it off. Okay. Camera up here to get a better shot at it. Most of this is bolted on with 15 millimeter. I think there's a couple of tens. I'm actually getting just a little ahead of myself here. Let me get the wiring spark plug wires and the supercharger belt out of the way. And the supercharger belt system is a complex pulley crap, but I gotta loosen off on that tensioner to get the belt off. Pretty simple. the 18 millimeter wrench up to the tensioner, turn it clockwise, and that loosens the belt. And the belt is loose. loosen all that. And apparently my flat blade screwdriver ran away. Ha. 
Now, the supercharger assembly is loose, but I gotta disconnect the bypass. I'm going to be disconnecting all the electrical pieces, IC, TPS, etc. And I'm going to be disconnecting the throttle cables and cruise control cables. Two 8mm bolts, disconnect, disconnect it from right here, and we'll be good to go. And now all of that is loose. So with that, I should be able to get the supercharger off. body supercharger intake plenum assembly. Yeah, that's, that's out of the way. You can see you have a lot more room to work with on the upper engine. <sighs> so now I'm going to start disconnecting the electrical, the fuel lines. And the electrical is just stuff like the fuel injectors that need to be pulled off. And I will be disconnecting this too because again there's hardly any room to lift the engine when you're taking it out the top with that in the way it's just three allen screws and again before I get too ahead of myself I'm going to go ahead and take the second and the cooler pipe off Spark plug wires. Now let's see if I can get this pipe out with the stupid um, power steering pump stall on here. The way they routed it is from bad design. And a little bit of So I'll just kind of leave that hanging there. There's a third Allen screw on this thing that's hid way in the back. You gotta work blind to get to it. Real pain. Voila, one plenum removed. And with the plenum removed, you can see I got a lot more room, vertical room there to move the engine up whenever I'm taking it out. Because I don't want to drop the subframe again on this car. Alright, moving on. I'm going to go ahead and pull the fuel lines off. The 
fuel lines are here and here. And as soon as I get that out of the way, the fuel system will be done. My stupid toolbox here. So no, I'm going to stay level there. I just got to find my line locks. There they are. And these are just... There's a little spring up inside there, and these compress the spring and make it to where you can get the line off. And one fuel line. And there's always going to be some fuel in there. It'll spill everywhere. It's going to be smoking. It might be open flame. Story, springs compressed and light will release. Second fuel out of the way, I always just kind of push them up and off the way. Bring this just to get them out of the way. I'm going to hit this like this. It's this PCB system. I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the way. It's the heater core lines. Another good reason for taking the supercharger and pulling them off is to be able to get to them there. There. And there, respectively. So, as soon as they're out of the way, I can get most of the remaining coolant lines out of my way. Thanks for me before this hose can kind of take them on. Something to note is your core lines have metal at that side. Uh, holds them on to the exhaust manifolds. And they're usually cranked down on them. But me being a smart mechanic, and this being my own personal car, I never fully tighten those back down. And here, of course, I'll leave them a little bit, but I'll clean that up a little bit. But, I never put those back up fully because they're a monster pain in the ass to get back loose. And I always figured that I might have to pull the engine again with anything that I do. And I don't want to have to deal with that again. Something here line is out of the way. So it connects down here in the front of the intake. It's mostly just for a bypass, but I get it out of the way anyway. And that right there is what I was talking about. It goes down there and connects to the exhaust manifold. It just holds this in place. You honestly don't need to crank anything down on it. Just Put it back on the studs and lightly tighten the bolts. That way I can take it back loose if I have to. adapter has heater or cooler on what you'd call it but it's got hand freeze that goes to it I guess it's a cooler but we're gonna disconnect those loose enough It went in 
to the catch point. And the stupid heater hose assembly is now out of the way. That's got to come off, so I might as well get it out of the way now. Typical. My smaller crescent is missing in action. Maybe it's in one of these little drawers here. Aha! Sorry about that. Smaller crescent. And in fact, I can show you this. What we're taking off is that line. Those the power steering pumps in the way of taking the intercooler out. As soon as I get that done, it's going to uh, start leaking power steering fluid everywhere. But there's a catch pan down there, so we're good. And the other intercooler pipe. Actually, getting pretty close to being able to pull it. Just gonna disconnect a couple more electrical items and start working on the bell housing bolts, and we'll be there. And I'm talking about a couple more electrical items. I'm talking about the DIS module. DIS module is this. And all this wiring here, and some of it goes down. One part of it goes to the AC compressor, and all that crap. And since that's out of the way, I'll be able to take the AC compressor off. I may even have to, I may just disconnect the lines. We'll see. disconnect is down there it's the cam synchronizer which it's usually broke on these cars so you don't have to worry about the clip and as you can see it's got a good tight seal even without a clip so I don't know why they bother Life Ford did us a favor and put a quick disconnect there so we can get this entire loom out of the way without doing a whole lot. over here to the O2 sensor wire. That's the little devil right there. It goes down there. Let's see if I can get that disconnected real quick.
Ah. And that allows this entire wiring lane to just be either I moved out of the way, or what I'm going to do is disconnect the quick disconnects over here. actually going to go ahead and disconnect the fuel rail and the fuel injectors because I don't want it potentially in the way but that's all this crap here four bolts hold it on I'll remove them get them right out of the way I'm actually gonna pause the video for a little bit and I will return as soon as I get that line off